So let's uh, look at the Kusala Dhamma we looked at and then the Aitana, then the Gabha, then uh, Adesana, Vidhana Desana. So what is the meaning of this is that Buddha can reveal. Okay. He can reveal. So he will he can show either some symbol and then he can reveal anything. Right, so that's the whole message. So let me share the screen so that you don't have to search for it. Mm -mm. There it is. Okay. So what what really that I'll just make it slightly bigger. So he says there are four ways. So, even we can do it, how you can come into this. So, there are four ways of revealing something. Meaning to say that if our mind is pure, let's say, or what is pure mind? Pure mind is that it doesn't have conditions. What is impure mind? Which has conditions. Okay. So, as long as we have conditions to satisfy, then you can't read anybody's mind. As soon as you stop conditioning even a bit, you can study that person's mind. Now, the question comes, how can one study one's other's mind? What we need to understand is that it is chitta, which is pure and bright. Pabhasaram idam chittam. The bright. So now the chuti is cutting off. So presently what has happened is the chitta is divided into one as Ariu two, as Shreyas three, as Supriya four, and as Chirak five at this moment. Okay. Now, if my chitta or the mind is not shaking like this, is stable, since Aryu is me only, and Shreyas is me only, and Supriya is me only, and Chirag is me only, so I now know the four minds. You got this point. If there is a separation, and then we call it is Chirag's mind. There is a, a separate individual called Chirag, but no such Chirag exists. Fine. It seems to be, but no such person exists. It's the mind which is making it up. Like Mano Pubbangama Dhamma is that the mind will then make up, make up as an individual. So now you have a mentality clash between A, who thinks he exists, and B, who also thinks he exists. <clears throat> so now, like in the case of Ariu, he has some students. So he tries to convince them because there are two separate individuals but there is no separate individual actually so are you way to understand that he is talking to himself there's no other person there then the conflict is resolved till that happens i see separation from everything so it's my body it's not Chirag's body. Because Chirag is in US and I am in India. So my body is different and Chirag's body is different. My mind is different. Chirag's mind is different. My experience is different and Chirag's experience is different. Like that, I keep on making these things up. So then it becomes more and more and more complicated. So the thing is, what he's trying to say 
Adesana Vidhana Desana is that he makes it revealing. I can basically tell what is happening. Because the chitta is pure. But in the vinyana, it is impure. So today in the evening, I will be doing this for the Hindi people on the nine stages of vinyana and how we should practice and all that. And then what we need to know now is when it is vinyana, it has no knowledge that it is chitta. But if somebody has a knowledge, and he can read the whole mind. Any questions? Otherwise, can I continue? Yes, Ariu. Um, some arahat wouldn't have this ability, right? Yes. Um, it is not to say their mind is impure. No. Mm. No. So, so what is that that makes them not able to read? It's uh, like this. There are two kinds of vimukti which I would be also talking about. So one is uh, Panya vimukti and Cheto vimukti. We already done that. And the one who is on Panya vimukti might not have this ability to read anybody's mind. Even though it is pure. Okay. Like <clears throat> there are a lot of yogis whose mind is not pure but they have learned how to suppress the defilements and hence they can read minds. The yogis who knows how to go to different realms of existence, even though there are defilements. Yes, I do. So basically you have to have the ability to have going to Chito Vimuti to be able to read the mind. So the, the person who has Panya Vimuti may not be able to go to that state of mind and hence not able to read. Yes, and that's the reason Buddha talks about seven types of individual and the last type of individual is Ubutho Bhaga Vimukti, who can be released from both sides. That means he has developed as much Panya as he has the Cheto Vimukti. Yes, sir, you. And I, and I think, uh, I'm not sure exactly right, but I think I have had the impression that Sariputta, in many cases, you know, he's, has Supreme Panya, right? Yes. But he's not able to have all these supernormal power like Mokalana. Yes, absolutely true. Mokalana. Absolutely true. And, and which means, yeah, despite his Panya being unmatched in the Sangha, you know, so if he has that type of Muti, he cannot have this side. Let's say he has Panya Muti. Would that be the right understanding? Yes. See, in fact, Buddha says in many suttas that that if there is no person who can match uh, Sariputta's wisdom, there is not even one person who can match it. And he also says that there is not even one person in terms of supernormal powers can match Mughalana. That is a fact. So, when he says that, it does not mean Sariputta can do what Mughala, Mughalana does. And uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that what Sariputta does, Mogalana can do it in Panya. So it would be right to see that uh, this Sariputta did not have this Bhakta ba 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 He only had Panya Rumuti. Yes. Yes. Even in his uh, uh, Dasuttara Sutta to all the suttas, he has said Mahahati Pada Pado Pama Sutta to the uh, Mahadukkha Khanda Sutta, to so many suttas, right? Uh, he doesn't, uh, Sammaditi Sutta. It's, he talks out of logic. He talks out of wisdom. But we are talking about Buddha. Yeah, because a lot of these things will have to come from logic because he may not have personal experience of something, you know, he has good complete exposition and something will be beyond his experience, right? So that means he's using inference, like he was saying there, he's using inference because he's such penetrated wisdom, he's able to make the claim despite of not seeing exactly the 
uh, that way. Right. Yeah, Chirag, you have any question, Supriya, Shreyas, on this very important topic? Yes. No question so far. Very good. Lucky guy. Okay, so what happens in this case is that just like in my case, some years ago, not there was one incident which I have already shared with you, with all of you. But this being is there with me, which people can't see, even I can't see, but yet I can hear. Like, if I were to read a book, if I open the book and this person reads out for me and he explains to me what is that and that gets embedded in me. So, it can so happen that I can read, somebody else can read and influence. So, the four ways of revealing is he will know the nimitta of the person. So he can be looking at the nimitta like what I do. I see the eyes of the person. I can penetrate that person. If his eyes are fixed, then I can penetrate. I can read all his past. Like from his childhood days and what it was and all. I get bits and pieces. If I were to develop it, I can get the whole thing. Like a movie. Now I can say, uh, if I take Chirag as an example, I can say, Chirag, when you were playing in this place and this is what you did and then Chirag would say, oh my goodness, how does he know it? Uh, how does I know it is that that movie is played in front of me. So, at that moment, I can see what is Chirag doing and then I think that's most important. I can stop and ask Chirag, why did you do like this in this moment? And Chirag is, oh my God, how can he do that? Because such and such thought, I know it appeared, it is stored, I can go and access it and the thought becomes live. And then what happens? It starts playing in Chirag's mind. So we both are seeing the same thing. Now it means that Chirag went to Aryu's home. They both started seeing the same movie. Now it doesn't matter whether Chirag sees it or Aryu sees it. They both are seeing the same movie in the same way. I can sit with Chirag and then read his mind as though it is a separate one, where it is not separation, but at least seems like separate one, and then I can read. Like in many cases, what uh, Aryu has sent some pictures, to whatever extent he has asked me, to that extent I can read that person's eyes and then say, oh, this person is like this. And if you verify, it would be like that. So what he says is that all the time it would be like that. Not one time. Okay, so this is what you are thinking, such is your thought and this is your state of mind. And even if they reveal this many times, it turns, turns out exactly so, not otherwise. This is the first part. Any questions? You said no question. And the second part, I had a... Question, question. Yes, yes, go ahead. I have been raising my hand. Uh, many questions. Many questions. Okay. <laughs> I was actually. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll go by reverse mode. So you were saying you were saying seeing the same movie, right? That means the mind are synchronized in a way, right? Like we're doing the FaceTime. There, so you can watch the video together, and we both watch together. Right? You're synchronized. Is that how the mechanism? Uh, how you can also plan some thoughts in others as well? Because you were saying sometimes. You can make others see it some way. And now that you or someone has that ability to find some thoughts, 
Or I think you mentioned you. They don't plant a thought. They will say you did it like this. So they go back to that place. So, so I, I'll take Chirag as an example because Supriya is not on video. I require people on video to do that. And only you both are there and I don't want to pick up on you only, Ariu. So today I've decided I'll pick on Chirag. And if, yeah, and if Supriya comes on video, I'll drop Chirag and go on Supriya. So what I require, what anybody requires to study this is the eyes. Eyes is the index of the mind. So if I know how to see Chirag's eyes or your eyes are you or anybody's eyes and then there is a, a thought or an image coming and there is an interleaving space and then another image comes and then there's a space and there's another image and then there's a space and then another image and there's a space. So the consciousness moves through that giving a impression like the movement like what we do in the movie is the same so if you take some papers and then you draw and then you do flip it so it seems like it's moving consciousness is exactly doing the same that is the chitta is doing the same okay now these interleaving spaces is where you can penetrate And once that person penetrates into it, he can access the entire movie now. Okay. So the frame by frame by frame by frame by frame, I'm able to see. Now what happens is I will tell Chirag, Chirag, let's go back to your 10 year old, just like hypnotism. Let's go to 10 years when you were 10. So what happens? His chitta will rewind 10 years. Yes, I'm in 10 years. Tell me what next. He's in the space, right? There's an interleaving space. So I have come to the 10th year of Chirag. While you were playing on this at this time, okay, while I'm playing at this and this time, okay, it goes there. You did this. Yes, I did it. But now this another mind which is evaluating will say, how does he know it? Let's for time being forget that. Okay. So now I am accessing the mind. And that is Chirag's thoughts, this thought. This thought has everything in that. It has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end. Uppada Titi Bhanga. All the three are there, or Udaya Vyaya of that thought. If I take the Udaya, I can know the Vyaya. That is the arising and passing of it. Let's take this as an example. Forget Chirag. Me, you, and Shreyas, and Sachin. We met in January. This is how I am triggering. Now I will tell, we went to this place. Will you not go to the place now? Even though right now you are in California. But can't you travel to that place? Yeah, yeah, Ariel. Okay, uh, uh, let me explain what I understood. All right, so I think my question is like this, right? <clears throat> because in Star Wars, you know, these Jedi, they can influence the mind, they are... Let me pass and say, okay, you sure pass, right? So, and you also once, I think you were saying in this interviews, you can influence the mind of the interviewer. Right? So what you're saying is, instead of giving a thought, say, think this way, because you can see the stream of mind, you can influence so they can rewind to a certain spot, at which, at which place they were more uh, likely to make a certain, you know, judgment about things, let's say, they start to see an interviewer who's doing well. And then if you're able to guide them to that place, then they start appreciating, oh, this is doing well. That is one. And the interleaving spaces, you can penetrate, since you've already penetrated, you can place your thought in that. There's a space. Between two frames, there's a space. Now you put that. What happens? It attaches to this. 
So while he is seeing in the consciousness, he sees this. So he's convinced. And that's it. Oh, you, are, you, are, you have changed that person's nature. Yeah, Chirag. Yeah, I think this last discussion made me even a bit more confused. So let's say there are a couple Good. of things. Good. I love it. <laughs> I was wondering I was wondering how silent are you and I wanted to see how it works. Yeah, go ahead. Now you are actual Chira. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I mean, okay, so one of the things you're saying is, uh, let's say, you know, uh, let, let's say someone is, you know, you're uh, talking, chatting with someone and, you know, you're, let's say, reminiscing on certain experiences. And why that person goes into that, you know, space and, uh, uh, it's time and space in, in their mind, then there's a possibility for you to, let's say, you know, do some inception or do some plant uh, thought that, you know, this is what happened or, and let's say, cause that person to think in that way, uh, which you want it to be. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... So I think, but I still don't understand what is this uh, interview thing that we're talking about. What do you mean by that means? Um, Interleaving thoughts, meaning it will overlap. Okay. So, so basically you're saying that, okay, let's say there's like a movie project, you know, it's playing a certain movie. And you like the remote and, you know, you're basically trying to... Uh, Cut that, that portion and put some other portion which will be running. I'll give you a, a very practical example. Let's hope that I'm getting visa to the US and I come to US. Will you not do what I want you to do? That's all what it is. Out of whatever. So I'll say, Chirag, let's go to this place. You say, Vilas, just two days ago I had gone there. At least for me, just like what uh, your wife do, does to you. She says that, let's go here. You're not convinced. But she will modify your, beha your behavior to get to what she wants. That means in your frames, she has inserted a thought which makes you start thinking on that. And that movie will start to play and you start doing exactly what you want to play. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but that's why I think that's even something uh, normal critics can do, right? They can... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, now the person who is standing in front of you can study it and say, you did like this, you did like that, you did like that. Mm. We do the same thing. I am not saying we don't do the same thing. But we will forget after that action act is over. We don't remember every thought of ours. Do we remember? Right. But this person, like what he is talking about, he has a sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he can go to your thoughts completely and then start to access them each one plate by plate, plate by plate and then bring it up and then you feel, ah, oh, I did this, oh, then he brings it up. You start to say, I did this, I did this and how do you know it? So the next question you're going to ask him is how? And that's what he's saying there. So I think what's really happening is it's not like you can read a person's mind, but basically you can reflect on what person is thinking. You know? So it's like, let's say you give some keywords, right? And you because of this, that certain industry word, words you have given to that person, certain movies end up playing in their mind. And you know, the thing is, even that person might not be aware of all the different movies that are playing. And you know, they might just not think that they are thinking this, but once you give a certain keyword, you know, maybe there are simultaneously many different movies that get being played. And you know, if you are, uh, let's say, adept enough, then you can browse through those different movies and you know, see. Which one gives you the information you need, or you know, which one tests? Okay. You're gone totally okay. tangential. This okay. person, if you meet him in your talks, he will access your mind. 
or the mind is in his control, not your control. Mm, okay. First thing, because he knows the nimitta, the sign. So he accesses you. He has an access to you. Just like, you know, you have a front door and you have asked him to come and sit. So he has an access, basically. No matter mm -hmm. how much security you had outside, that nobody bothers. So, but he has access to you. So when he has access to you, he can tell you, Chirag, this is what you are thinking now. How does he know it? I never said it to him. Then he says, such and such is your thought. Huh? How does he, how is he accessing all of this? It's like somebody reading the hard drive and saying, this is the file what you kept here. This is what you are doing. And then he is shocked. Then I say, look, I've hacked your system. Okay. And then the third one, this is the state of your mind. There are many states of the mind. So he's saying, at this moment, this is your state of the mind. And he would also say, what is going to happen? And he said, no, 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 nothing. And it happens the same. That's what he's saying. And even if they reveal this many times, it turns out exactly so, not otherwise. Got it? Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for you, Chirag. No problem. So, so uh, let's say, but the thing is, let's say uh, this person can only see what is being protected on that mind, right? It's not like they can go deep inside and access something that is not currently or, or nothing like that. Is, hey, Chirag, listen to me. You give your house. Yeah. To someone, you are saying only access the front, for, you know, the uh, balcony, but not anything else. He will access your washroom, then he will access your sofa, then he will access your kitchen, then he will access your bedroom, he will access the whole house because you have allowed him to do so. So, even if you're not thinking those things, but that person is able to, yes, them absolutely. Like, you know, I told you, I think, I think I've said, I don't mind again saying this to you. It, during COVID times, one girl wanted to commit suicide. Her grandfather died of COVID and the parents were in two separate places in India and they couldn't take care of the daughter. So the daughter from the time of her birth has been taken care by the grandparents. It so happened that the grandfather had a complication and then he got COVID and then at that time in India as in other countries, I think so, they were not allowing anybody to go to the hospital. So you can do a video call at the max. So the doctor did a video call to show how his, her, how his father for the son and the, this granddaughter was also watching. So she couldn't take it that the grandfather passing away. So then she thought that what's my life without my grandfather because everything is for my grandfather and he, he himself is not there a point. So she became very remorse and uh, hitting herself, crying all the time and then she got into depression. So they went to a couple of psychiatrists to get her come out of that and they couldn't do so. So, my sister, who is now in the US, so she knows, I mean, she knew that I'm doing all of this. So then what she did is, anyway, you have tried so many things, your daughter is not responding to it. I have my cousin, he reads people's minds, so why don't you go to him? He might be of some help, maybe it works. So then this girl came. I started... I was looking at her, she was not talking, she was just sitting like this, once in a while she talks, then she sobs. I wanted some space where I can penetrate. So once I got it, I started her childhood. 
and then I'm saying this is what you were doing, this is how you were, this is what you should do, this is what it is, blah blah blah. Then she started corresponding with me. So her parents also were sitting in front of me. So after one hour, she broke down. Then I told her, look, you can commit suicide. I'm telling it in front of your parents. You can do it. If a thought of suicide has come, please do it. But before doing it, think about your grandfather. The amount of love he has given you and if he finds that you are dead, what he would feel? And that shook her. And she said, I'm not going to do it. And she became all right. And the exam, what she wanted to take, she wanted to drop off school. But she did it. I told you, dedicate to your grandfather. So, what happened, um, Chirag, is that since I was able to access her mind through her eyes, I could read it. Once I get one, I can take the whole thing. I, I only require a piece of it, not that a whole thing. Even in your case, Chirag, if I get your eyes, I can get deeper into it. There is nothing called, I will get shallow and I will get deep. It's, I access you completely. So, you are basically, you don't have anything as you left. And that is what he is saying here. And Buddha can do it all the time with everyone. Whether they give them access or no access, for him everything is accessible. Yes. Okay, I hope, I hope Jarek's question are fairly answered, but um, I'm wondering, uh, in earlier answer question, so because uh, this, uh, this um, birth moment, right, this should be, um, uh, uh, what was the word, I forgot, the cutting and the rejoining process. Chuti. Chuti, cutting, right, with rejoining. Um, Pati Sandi. So Pati Sandi, okay. So, it's more difficult to go through that for, right? Because for you, you may be able to read from to the childhood, but you may not be able to go through to the past life. For yes, example. yes. Because that would require even higher purity. Right? Yes, absolutely. So if I know that, then I can get all of it. Yes. It's like, it's like this. This is one room. There is a switch on, so the light comes, which is chitta. Now the room is, you switch off the lamp, which means chuti. This no longer can access this room, right? It goes to the next room, we call it as ariyu, for a change. And it is switched on there all the time, so we can say somebody is there. Because switch on. And then it switches off, a switch off. Then we can call that as Chirag. At the point. Now, but basically, if I am a smart person having a pure light, can't I read, can't I access that room where it is now dark? Can't I access that next room which is now dark? Because I have light, right? So I can see everything around in that room which at present is dark. That's the best simile I can give you. So, we, wait, so somebody asked, did you see a sofa there? I said, yes. Did you see a table there? I said, yes. Oh my goodness. How? It's very simple. The light falls, it can reveal everything. What's there to say, can you access this much or that much and this, this other one? All that it requires is an access. Now, can I now read the past life of that person? Simple. If I, my chitta is such pure, I can read my past life, also I can read others' past life. Why not? What, what changes there? Yes, sir. And because Buddha, for example, the Kaleta is completely removed. Yes. And that purified soul pure, you can read every person's life for infinite amount due to 
that ability. But for for normal Arha, let's say, or someone, the Kilek says, like you said, deactivated. So there's still impurity left, hence the light is not complete. It's not complete, I can go this case. Yes, so the question what is asking is, can we take the analogy of a torch light and the sunlight? No, you don't have to confuse so much, Reyes. It's light is light, whether torch light or sunlight or whichever light. If there is a light in the room, it lights everything. It's not biased, saying that I will only light up this much. It lights everything. Yes, are you? Yeah, go ahead. No, Shreyas has typed. No, Shreyas has typed that in terms of what what can be read. Uh, in terms of how much you can read. Yes. A Buddha can read like a sun and we can read like a torch. We can take it that way. Analogy. Yeah, then my question is, in one of your, you've given account of some of your past life, but in one of them, you only see part of it. Yes. Okay. So that means that for that one, you haven't accessed the No, I don't that. have access. Yeah, you just got some impression came up. And that yes. hence you get... I, I only accessed one room out of the so many rooms. The light fell on one room, so it could light up everything in that room because of whatever condition it was in. Right? In the, in the case of my friend or this, uh, basically the travel agent who became friendly with me because of Buddha teaching. And then, while on the flight from Delhi to Leh, okay, I started seeing what he was and etc. etc. before his son died, okay, this incident. And now, I was telling him, boss, I and you are lamas, basically. So, we've been on this path for a long time, is what I'm seeing. And we are born in Tibet. And that much I can see. And I know that you just said to me, we were sitting in one monastery, and indeed you, then you said to me that you wait here, I'll come back. You never came back. And then after a few years, I died like this. So now I am following you to get you out of the family life. Okay. Then we were talking like this. He felt true. What I am saying is true. So we were in a place called a Sokar Lake in November. It's a lake in Himachal, fully frozen. And we were doing some travel thing for a princess. Then he started feeling. And that's the first time I ever cried in my life forever after listening to the Metta Sutta and all that, which I already shared with you anyway. So there's no point in going back to that. Wait for a second. Now, that much portion I know. But April 2018, we went to a monastery in a place called Thix, sorry, um, it's in Dixit. In that monastery, there was a lama, old, old lama. Okay? So he, my friend, this guy, wanted to say that he knows so much about Tibetan Buddhism, he knows about Buddha teaching, and he looked at my eyes. Just a gaze. And he said, you know what, you brought a Lama. And then he said, you are not supposed to sit here. You are supposed to sit there. That's your place. And he made me sit separately. And my friend was even more convinced. June, May end of 2018, his son died. And then I have to go and help his wife and himself to come out of the entire suffering they were having. A 22-year-old dying in most mysterious circumstances where a rock falls on him 
while sitting in the car and from 1945 till 2018 no rock has fallen in that place and why it only fell now nobody knows but whatever might be the case so he was thinking and she was his wife was thinking what's a karma we have done to have such a suffering but you know what i was able to go through their life go through their what is happening and i was able to tell them how they should so it was a kind of what i can say telepathy or whatever you want to call intuition whatever names you can give it you can give it but this is exactly what is written there you can know the thought you can know what's happening on that and you can influence okay so that much little i know of that person also because i could only access that much yes sir um, just to understand you because this 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 story you gave on the plane where you see part of it this is not lighting up the whole room you just no. got some impression of it because you had a different light for you know the whole of it right but this one you just see sit and bit from it because you're not able to access the entire mind exactly exactly because there is there are impurities so that blocks it just like you have a light and then you have some dirt on the bulb and then that much only can come right even though the light is so uh, you know bright but only this much can be seen because the entire thing is covered by what not mm -hmm. kind of things but, but you were also just making an analogy of going into the room if you can access then the entire can be seen yes absolutely and in, case, and in this case you didn't enter the room per se you saw a glimpse of i got access or i went a part of the room for whatever reason that that much only was available let's say so you 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 get you get whatever you can see right so i could only see that much see i am telling you another thing after 2018 or 17 i have never seen my tibetan life ever not even once i i tried i thought okay let me meditate and go to tibet i seen tibet it comes i lasa comes then uh, shigatse then the place i was born that also comes and the lama whom i met who took me into monastery that also i know i know my teacher who was teaching me but beyond that i am not able to do anything that that means how in what circumstances did i die okay it's unclear and in uh, uh, in the same year of the of that uh, you know november 2016 17 whatever that time frame is is when that doctor was checking everybody's uh, oxy oxygen level in that lake generally they always suffering out of um, uh, this altitude sickness me and my partner this partner we both i am not a tibetan neither i am not a himalayan person but surprisingly for the doctor my oxygen level blood oxygen is showing 89 at 17000 feet it's amazing at she was saying that from which place this person is and then i told bangalore she was looking like this is she you look like a more like a um, localite rather than from bangalore and my partner said you don't know many things about him so don't ask him so you are seeing that we have oxygen level right you leave us alone we know what to do because she was saying that don't jump don't do this don't do that and i am doing all kind of things over there so so that much portion i know the teacher like in my past life one past life completely i know so that much portion i have a con complete access i can go back to that past life again and again because now i have access but can i have access to all the past lives no i can but there's a dirt which is not allowing me to go to the past life so as much as it is so much you will see it 
But in the case of Buddha, what he is saying is, he can reveal all the thing all the time for all the people. See, for you, me, or uh, Supriya, or Chirag, or anybody else, or me, we might get it to what we can light upon. But we might not access everything of us, everything of everyone, all beings, irrespective of whichever realm they are in. And Buddha can see every being in every realm. And that's amazing. Yachira. Okay. Uh, it looks like there is some place that stores impressions of everything that ever happened. W what is that place? See, in, mean, the, uh, in, the, in the Hindu scriptures, it is called as Akashic Records, which is Akasha, space. The impressions of every individual is stored in a space. And in the Buddha teaching, it is called Nama Gutta. So, whatever you say, do, do whatever it is, it is like a cloud drive. Today's technology, if we take cloud drive, you get access to it. So, you download the files. You get to see all that what you should be seeing. You can create many more files if you want, provided you have access to it. Then you can store back to the cloud drive. So next life, you again get the access to the cloud drive. So it continues. So basically, you are not storing in your hard drive in your local system. It's in the cloud drive. So no matter how many computers are changed, hardware, the cloud drive is cloud drive. So if you have access, you have the you know the password of it, you can access it doesn't stop you from doing that. Yeah, we'll just take me and again come back to you, uh, Chirag. Yeah, yeah, me. Me, we can't hear you in case you're speaking. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, when you do past life regression, what, what, are, what are you doing? I mean, because I've, I've tried some of that before, but, um, you know, you obviously don't get the full access. You didn't get full glimpses of things. What are you doing is that you are doing two things. You are stilling the mind. Stilling the chitta. The chitta is going like this. It's going like this. So you are making slow, 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 slow. And then it stops. The breath stops. At that moment. So now you can direct the chitta. Or you in the sense the chitta knows how to light it like this. And it opens up all of that record which it is putting there. So this is my first life. This is my second life. This is my third life. You can go back and see, see how things went and all of that can be seen. But if it goes little, you take little. And then after that, there is no access. So you get in tits and bits and pieces. So, I'll give you another example. There's another term used called Deja Vu. How many of you heard? I don't know. What it really means is that you feel you were there in this place. And that's exactly what is this past life regression is. That you know you were here, but you don't know when you came here. And you feel so familiar. You see, oh my goodness, I was here. Like in the case of Colorado, I love it because I feel that deja vu effect in Colorado other than Himalayas. So the only place, that's the reason I love this, that uh, Rocky Mountain High. I feel I'm connected with Denver for whatever reason. Okay, if I'm left in Denver, I think I can do the past life regression of that place, of Denver. So. Itched, etched in my mind that I know I was there. In the same way, in Tibet, I can see the places without having gone to Tibet even once. I have not been in Tibet. But it's so touching to me, especially some of the monasteries in Tibet is inaccessible because of the government. But I know I was there. 
and even in Ladakh, where I have gone to some of the monasteries, I exactly know where I was sitting and it just takes me there, which I've seen even in Bhutan when I gone to that, uh, this one, Tiger Nest. I mean, that, that monastery is called a Taksang Monastery. So, I exactly know I was here. So, I go, I feel, and when I sit there, I feel, ha, now I am back. So, it depends may on how much you can get it. So, you have to still the mind. Without stilling the mind, you can't get into that. Yes, go ahead, me. No, you're done. I was nodding my head. Oh, you're just nodding your head. Okay, fine. Yeah, Chirag. So, let's say these uh, records, you know, the Kashi records, uh, are they like personal records or they are impersonal records? They're personal. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I'm asking you was, you know, let's say, you know, we pass from one life to another, one life to another, and, you know, there are certain impressions that we leave. And I was just wondering, you know, I think the reason, let's say, if I try to access my memories, I can more likely access my own memories than someone else's. I think there's like some thread between uh, different lifetimes and so on, you know, and they're all connected in some way. Exactly. And I guess what I think is, let's say we talk about, you know, this, this cloud and data in the cloud, but it's not like, you know, you can access anything at any time. It's more like maybe uh, if you are connected to one person, then you know, you're more likely to access their own personal records. Uh, it, it, I don't know if I'm making sense, but yeah, it seems to me that, uh, you know, uh, like let's say to our life and whatever there is, it, these records are connected in some way. Uh, that's all I'm saying. That's I mean, correct. Uh, no, it's like this, Chirak. You have access to cloud drive, and you let's say you are the system administrator, you have access to all the cloud drives. It doesn't matter whose cloud drive it is. Because now you are the you are the data center, let's say. So you will have access to all the data centers. Or rather, that data center which has so many servers and so many of the hardware. There's so many cloud drives. Let's say you have a virtual machine, VM1, VM2, VM3, VM4, like that. You have so many virtual machines. You have access to all the virtual machines. Now, can't you not go and configure? You can. Can't you have a security patch on that? Yes, you can do it you know, without even making the user aware. You can change the screen, you can change the logo, you can do this, you can do that. Because you are the system admin. So what if you are system admin like what he's saying there? So you can read whatever you file you want, right? And the user is on the dumb terminal and then he has no idea what are you reading. It can happen. Why it can't happen? So it depends on whether I have my local user and I'm only accessible to that and that's, that's all what we all are. So Supriya thinks she is Supriya. Are you thinks he's are you? You think you are Chirag. Me thinks I'm me. Shreyas thinks I'm Shreyas. And Vilas thinks I'm Vilas. So we are dumb terminals, basically. Because you don't have access beyond what you know. What if you have a local admin rights. Now, can you not look at NSA is watching? What is NSA? No, it, it's some uh, monitoring agency in the United States who's monitoring everyone's data. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, let's say you are a local admin. So, they have given you a local admin rights. Can't you not read? If you go to command prompt or whatever prompt and then using some uh, uh, encryption, decryption, can't you not see what all softwares were installed earlier? You can. If you know how to do that, you can. It will tell you when it was installed, when it was deleted, last accessed, all of that information is there. Correct. Does it stop me from doing that? And the answer is no. It doesn't stop me from doing it. What if I don't have access to it? Nothing you can do. Nothing I can do also. 
it's all based upon the access. So what Buddha is saying, what uh, Sariputta is saying is that Buddha is one to whom no password is required of anyone. And you, no, no, you, you can't encrypt it. You can't give a 128-bit encryption or whatever encryption because all encryption are removed by Buddha. And he, he knows it. Yes. So earlier when you, you were saying something about, you know, changing the impression, let's say, someone was thinking, let me go to, and he was saying about to go to the United States, that's his thought. But you cut in there and put Australia, that's it. So you change the impression. So I was thinking how this kind of thing, how it relates to changing one's karma. But then I realized it's not the intention you're changing, because intention is one thing, impression is another thing. Exactly. And even, even this changing impression happens all the time in mundane life as well. Just because I was saying you cut me off and say this, let's say I'm saying a bad thought, you immediately say a positive thing and change my mentality as well. So there's no such thing as changing one's karma. So even Buddha cannot change the karma, but he can change the impression. Yes, and he can change the impression. He can change, anybody can change anybody's impressions. Mm -hmm. Because the, that particular thing will go and something else will take in its place and then the karma starts acting on that. So you're not basically changing the karma. You are making him aware what should be done and what should not be done. And hence, you can remove the bad things and put the good things because you have both good and bad. But there's a limitation of how much even Buddha can do this, right? Absolutely. Because let's say I'm a theory killer. This Why? He couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't stop Ajata Shatru from killing his father. Yes. Both Bimbasara and Ajata Shatru are the disciples of the Buddha. But even then he, can't, he couldn't stop Ajata Shatru from killing his father. And, and I think a lot of these supernatural, even you feel it supernatural, but it, in the mundane you will exactly find a counterpart as well, right? Because these kind of mind reading, understand people's mind, but let's say a good listener, what does it mean? Is that he's relatively calm himself, right? So he can start to reflect on what they're saying and start to understand better. And sometimes we say a word before they're saying, saying a sentence, they're missing the word, but you can, you know, you can fit and fill in the word for them when they're struggling to. So all these are forms of, you know, reflection. It's just, uh, this happened at a more pure, more subtle level than that. Exactly. See, the, the thing what we are talking here is, in the case of the Buddha, he can reveal it all the time, in the same sequence, for everyone, forever. Because his mind is billions of suns, let's say. And anything kept there, he can see it. Even if the person feel I have stored it here, nobody can see it. The sun can see. What do you mean I can't see? I, I can see it. Right, so that's all what it is. Not a great thing, but it is, he's going on the sign, revealing by sign. Yes. And I, and I also feel like in the presence of such mind, of such person, the, the, the other person starts to see better as well, without even this person doing much, right? Because the, he starts to reflect because they become more reflective in, in For, the presence of this. Forget all about it. Bobby is here. We'll ask Bobby the changes what my brother has been having in this recent past. Bobby, why don't you say, yesterday you met my brother and his wife. You don't have to mention the problems, but then you can say whether there's an influence or not. Bobby, if you are hearing. Just to clarify, by any chance you're talking about, oh, your brother, not your wife's brother. My brother. My brother. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Bobby. Hello? Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, see, actually, actually, I was outside, you know, that's why I was not speaking. But uh, there is some sound of the car. Can you hear that? Yes, is yes. Any disturbance? That's okay. But, but still, you can talk. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, 
well, it's good to say when your, your brother, like, yes, uh, like, yeah, I have, we have to try to change its, um, like, you know, some effect on the, uh, like, immediate past. That's what you're asking, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that's how definitely, like, you know, when you uh, take our own example, like, you know, so we have done a lot of bad things in the uh, uh, past, but um, when we get an opportunity to hear some good dhamma, no, that uh, maybe replaces that uh, um, the you know fast uh, strong sangharas, and then the new habits uh, actually start working. So my yesterday we had a good talk, with, and it is the important thing that you know he was also ready to listen and uh, willing to uh, change uh, uh, change his way of living. You know, because some kind of uh, uh, faith, you know, the, I think, I, I believe that is the first step in Dhamma. Some kind of faith and confidence uh, start working. You know, the belief in karma and uh, belief in, like, you know, the, maybe the change in uh, Vilasji, you know, what is, uh, you know, he can, he can feel a definite change in him. So, um, like, you know, so he, he, he is getting that confidence. So, this all, um, like, you know, it's an opportunity for uh, people who are practicing a little bit more in Dhamma to have some influence on the people who are listening. So, I, so the Marina also was saying, you know, after the talk, you know, she felt that uh, there is, uh, she was listening and uh, some uh, kind of influence is there. So this is the beginning, you know, so I think it definitely replaces the old Sangharas and, you know, start working. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. So let me tell you the context so that it, it shouldn't be out of context. So in, yeah. the, in the case of uh, Marin, she can, yeah. she can see, uh, what I can say, the aura. Okay. So she can see the aura of the people. So then, uh, what happened is that I was telling uh, my brother and his wife. Bobby, if Hello? you can, yeah, Bobby, you can um, mute your microphone for a minute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I was telling both of them, my brother, own brother and his wife, I was telling them that how karma affects. So basically your question, if I say, can you influence, can anybody influence? Yes. Influencing is possible. Buddha can influence every one of us because your psyche will change. Because you have an interleaving space between two frames. So, you, as you start listening to the Dhamma, this will start to move out. And another movie which you had played earlier is getting connected on the same network. So, now you are on a network which will take you to one particular destination. That's the reason he calls it as Gotrabhu. That means you have changed your lineage from this to that. Right? So, you can change. So basically, influencing is possible and any Dhamma person can influence because he has pure mind, meaning he can light it up and in that light, the reflection is so strong that a person can see. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I have one question, but just to clarify on this, uh, your brother's case, the Marine was able to see because your brother was with you around where you live, but the Marine would be able to see the difference he has before and after the conversation because he can see the change of the aura. That's yes. why you have probably to clarify. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that, that's one thing, but I guess my question is slightly different. I know, of course, by talking Dhamma, you can influence person's mind. That's no doubt about it, right? But I was asking, having, let's say, you sitting in front of me, right? It'll make myself more self-aware, like, because there's light shining and I start revealing, let's say, I start talking. And when I talk, I'm more reflective and than, than usual because even without you talking them, there's an influence in that sense. Yes, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And you have been doing that. Yeah. And many people have been doing that with me. Even I don't speak anything. When they come home, they start talking. So, yeah. it works. Yes. Why yeah. that? The property where we are bought, that guy, that person is a businessman. But the way he talks to me is totally different than he talks with any other person. And he has not asked me for money. 
Even on Sunday when we met, I said we will be delayed. He said, don't talk about that. You are doing a meditation center and that's what I am interested in. Fine. Right? But can he do the same thing with others? And he wouldn't do it, right? So, basically you can see, even I have not told him about Buddha Dhamma. You have not to, I have not told him that you should have five precepts and this and that and nothing I have told him. Okay. Even while we were negotiating on the rate, I told him, look, I am donating. This is not mine. It's a donation. So, when I am donating, you tell me what best you can do. That's all. It's, I am donating my money and others are donating their money. It's not our money at all. We are just donating it. And he said, he was shocked. He said, for you, I have to do something. And he did it. And believe it or not, he has said he is going to construct something for us. So, after we finish all of these formalities, I am going to ask him, you promise something, can you do something like what we are seeing on this thing, on my background. So, I will ask him whether he can build a kuti like this. And if he says yes, so nice. In these days when people talk business and nothing else, he is getting influenced or not? And that's what we can see. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. I guess a simple way of understanding it in like modern science term is the interference of weight. Right? You're right. There's interference, so hence it's changed. See, it's not like that. It's uh, if you use it quantum mechanics, okay, in the quanta, you can have one or many. Right? So, if there is an observer effect, it goes as particles instead of waves. So, when I am observing him, his electrons are moving like particles instead of being waves. So, the photons which are firing are firing as particles, no longer interfering each other as waves. If there is wave, there is an interference pattern. That means it can be with one slit or both slits. Whereas, when there is no interference pattern, there is only one slit through which it goes. There is no interference. So, basically, observer effect, like what we are trying to observe, the third party or Sampajanya or whatever words you use, it is an observer, right? Sakshi means observer. So, we are observing and when you observe, the photons will now emit straight. They do not go here, they do not go there. They just go straight. So, this person who is also made out of electrons, protons and neutrons. So, the photons which are light particles are going in hitting at the same frequencies. And then only you can read that person, right? So, if you are using quanta, I can say you in this way. Okay, so now we are almost time. But so, so we ended up only with one. My goodness, the many, the four of them we have to complete. Okay, let's take the second one. Okay, by hearing the sound of thought spreading as someone thinks and considers, just the sound. There was nimitta symbol here, just the sound, and sound will open up everything for him. Okay. And he will be revealing it all the time through sound. Yes. So, this means as someone thinking, you know, in their mind, a sound is heard as if it's a sound. Correct. Uh, is it frozen? No, it's not frozen. Not frozen. Is it frozen? I don't think so. I am able to see every one of you. Ah, you are frozen. And in the second. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm back. Sorry. I asked the question that I 
completely got approach. Yes. All right, well, the answer. So I was asking, so as I was thinking, you will be here as hearing as if it's sound. The thoughts come as sound to your ear. I had to do the previous one. There is Devata also. There's human and non-humans. So they inform in the ear. Like this person who entered into my life in uh, August or September of 2013. He was there with me till July of 2022. Nine years. This being has been really influential. He would come and say, you're doing this, why are you doing this, why are you doing that, did I tell you? So sometimes I feel bugged, this person bugging me all the time. See, one thing is if I see at a girl like this, he says, aren't you ashamed? And then I, and then I see this, he says, why are you seeing there? And then I see here, did I ask you to see there? Then I, then I don't know what to do. Even if I'm taking a bath, he's there. He's there everywhere, basically. I just said, he just asked me once, can I come to your home? And I don't know if there's a male or a female also. It's just the sound which keeps on coming. Okay. So then that disembodied being, call it a devata, call it by whatever name, is there with me all the time and when I was in Abu Dhabi, I had a real funny experiences. He gives me some experience and he keeps on laughing. I can hear his laughter in the room. Okay. He says, look how, how I have done you, what I have done about you. And he will do funny things. If I am if I'm gone to the washroom, he will say I am sitting here in front of you. And that would be covering both the second and third case. In yes, the second and, and third case. So, yeah. if, so when, I, when I was working with my friend in, uh, in Deloitte, so on Agile, right? So I have gone to Abu Dhabi. So now he says to me what I should do. This person has come. You talk in this way. So I talk in that way. Now he says you do this way, Vilas. It will work. And I do it. It works. So basically, he's controlling everything I say. And I got an award for that, which I can give it to him. Boss, it is you who has done it, not me. So nice. And to an extent, I got an offer of $20,000 per month as salary. If I had stayed in Abu Dhabi forever, that for, means from 2015, now we are in 2024, nine years, how much money I would have made in Abu Dhabi? And it's a tax-free income. There's no tax. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. He made the, 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 the day that has often come to Buddha and inform, right? That would be the second. Why in, that? In, Even, in, yes, in the, the, the recent, last year, December, uh, when I went to the Vipassana course, it, it, Devata came and I, I'm seeing him. I am talking to him and he says, these are the things what you need to do. So you do this to your family. And I said, I will do it. And then I just did like this. And he said, may all good thing happen to you. And he left. This was on the eighth day before the assistant teacher called me. So I was watching this DT coming and talking to me. I was so blissed out. Okay. I was very happy at I had told this assistant teacher, look, I know this, how to do it. And he was not believing. He's saying that, no, 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 we are this, we have this tradition and all of that. So seventh day, sixth day onwards, I have got into it. So then he was saying that I'll see your temperament and then I will allow you in, in your room and blah, blah, all that. Then on the eighth day, before he called me to his room, I was talking to the DT. Okay. And he was telling me, Look, what you are doing is right. You are seeing this Kalapa. This is how it is. You are getting this experience. I didn't have to ask uh, the assistant teacher. I didn't have to ask anyone. Even though I knew it, the deity is making sure that I understand. And I am just keeping my hand like this. Not in physically, but really 
and I'm sitting and I'm meditating. I don't know what happened to the assistant teacher. He's been observing, observing, and then he, uh, after our uh, um, first round, after lunch, then he said, call him to my room. So one volunteer walked by and he said that assistant teacher wants to talk to you. I said, okay, I'll go. So then assistant teacher, he's asking me, look, I'm seeing you from first day. You are somewhat different and everybody is watching you. What do you do? I said, I am on Buddha Dhamma for a long time. This Vipassana, what you are asking me to do is a forced one because many people from our group are from VRI. For them, I am doing it. But I know what is Vipassana and I know what is going a technical so. And I know in which sutta you can work it this way. Okay, so if you do like this, you don't require to come to this retreat, you can do it yourself. And then he said, look, the reason why I called you is, I am very happy about you. If you want, now you can sit in your room and meditate. I said, no, we are on the eighth day, two more days left. I wanted to do because there is one assistant teacher whom I know, who wanted me to go and uh, do it in uh, a Shunyagara. He was forcing me. So, I didn't want to go back and say that I couldn't go to Shunyagara. So, I asked you. Otherwise, for me, whether I sit in the room or sit here, sit in the garden or wherever, it doesn't really matter to me. For me, everything is the same. So, yes, the deity spoke is also true. I had a disembodied being who was helping me from 2013 to 2022, July. When I told him, sir, please leave me. Otherwise, I don't know whether I have learnt it or not or you are only doing everything for me. So, then after he left, I was sure that the influence what he had on me is also, it's there in me. Not that he went and then I, I don't know what to do. Yes, Bobby. You, you are saying that uh, you know uh, which so, so there, I know also the sutta uh, which uh, the way you are practicing. Which is that sutta? Which one? That uh, the going uh, technique. I think yeah. that's what I understood. Sati pat Sati patana sutta. Oh, Sati patana sutta. <laughs> but he is only taking little bit of that, right? Yes, I am taking all the four, and also okay. the panchakanda, yeah. right? There are so many yeah. of them. Yes. Okay. Yes, are you? A question, when these deities talk to you or these sound of thoughts are coming, are they coming as actual sound as in a particular language or are they coming as perceptions or signs? You just know. You get all the four. You can see the person as a person in your mind. You can see. He or she will talk to you in the language where you can understand it. There can be telepathic messages. And the fourth one, there will be symbols which is shown to you. On that basis, the mind can take it as an input and start working on that. Yes. I'm sorry, what is the second of talking to your language versus the telepathy? Versus what? What's it versus the third one? Telepathy, you think? Uh, telepathy word. is you, you, you get the information dump. Okay. See, at that moment, what is required, you just get that information. It need not be in any language of yours, but you will automatically start getting it. Mm. But the fourth one is a perception. It's, it's just a, a perception, yes. Like, you know, when I was in Sri Lanka, I came back and then this uh, Thero wanted me to uh, do the desana and then Samantha Chakkavali Su Atra Gachanto Devata. I really felt it when I started the first time. I felt somebody sitting next to me. I was, you know, worried actually that I'm feeling some body, you know, some heat coming. Like, you know, somebody sits next to you, how you would feel it. So when I was reciting Samantha Chakkavale Su Atra Gachantu Devata Saddhamma Munirajasa Sunantu Sagga Muggadam Dhamma Savanakalo Ayam Badanta Ya Paritta Savanakalo Ayam Badanta Whatever. I was supposed to say, when I did the first um, uh, discourse in Sri Lanka on the Satchavibhanga Sutta, he, they had asked me that 
when you begin uh, vilas you should say this samanta chakkavale so and all that i said yes sir yes bhante i will do it so then the video that um, he said okay now you go ahead so it was on facebook as well as as well on youtube live so when that was my first desana okay so i am sitting and that was the very first time i have opened up the uh, the sutta satcha vibhanga sutta okay i am just wanting to read then this person sitting next to me i felt i didn't have to read that so it is from sariputta i have never read it in my life to be honest okay whether this disembodied being who did it or whether this devata did it i don't know but when i recited samanta chakkavale su atra gachantu devata i was feeling somebody sitting next to me so i'm just sitting straight like this because i know somebody is watching me so now i have this uh, on my laptop i have that sutta i wanted to read and he is saying no reading now how should i explain what happened i don't know i knew the entire sutta so after that that being is gone so then i was reflecting i was thinking that he would have done a telepathic transfer of this entire sutta and it came out well actually satcha vibhanga sutta as a very first time i did it i have no idea that how i should speak what should i say that my first desana forever now at least i know how to speak and all that but at then no information yes bobby so it's it's very funny also 2 and 3 happens but in the case of buddha is all the time it's all the beings in my case i can't read uh, supriya unless she gives her eyes or any other person giving their eyes and if i sit see the eyes and then i can say i can read them but in the case of buddha there is no need for that yes go ahead all right i think we to try to talk the fourth one because it's i have a question after the fourth one no the fourth i don't one, have time i need to i need to okay. rush out so tomorrow okay. we will meet and we will uh, th- there's no point in rushing so let's end at the third one and chirag might be having one long standing question yes go ahead so not my but uh, yeah i think we can we can meet for no but if you have a question i don't mind Uh, I mean, actually, we're going to think about this uh, one more time. So maybe I'll have more questions later. Yes, yeah, sure. Absolutely fine. And anyway, this video will be posted, so you can go through it and find out any questions you have. But basically, any person sitting here, if your chitta is bright, you can read other person. Simple. How much can you read is up to you. But you can read. You can read your own mind. You can read other people's mind. Okay. you can have devata helping you you can have other beings helping you you can have other beings supportive of you you can have other beings disruptive of you it can have many flavors and when you start seeing the beings like uh, i before ending i will also tell you my schooling life here i have been seeing beings from age 4 okay it's not a first time i'm seeing beings i have been seeing beings from age 4 four five like that and when i was going to the college i used to have this whole ceiling used to turn white keep bright like somebody has put on the tube light and then somebody descends and he talks on that being talks and goes away then something comes something comes i used to I never used to fear for ghost because I'm seeing them all the time. Okay, five years I've seen all the time from 1980s four five till 1993. Okay, I've seen many of them in the room. 
while sleeping. After 12 a.m., I have some of the other visitor. There's few days where I didn't have any visitors. Otherwise, there's some of the other person comes. He sits next to me. And if I'm open my eyes, I can see that there's somebody sitting next to me. It's funny. 